Elsewhere, we are getting our first look today at something that most of us will be seeing many, many more times over the coming years, the new postage stamp showing King Charles III. Don't rush to the post office right yet, though, because you mm -hmm. can't buy it uh, at this point. They're going to be on sale from April the 4th, but the Royal Mail is displaying the new stamp today at an exhibition in London, and our Royal Correspondent, Daniela Ralph, has been along. Every monarch since Queen Victoria... Every reign, whatever its length, has had a stamp. Symbols of a sovereign in our everyday lives. And there is about to be a new one. On display at the Postal Museum in London, a first look at the stamp of King Charles III. This will be what's known as his definitive stamp. It is a simple, stark image with little adornment. Unlike his mother, he has chosen not to wear a crown. As with all stamps, uh, of course, uh, the monarch approved them, and so we hope that he's happy with this design. And I think if I can say that the guidance we were given uh, was not to try to be too clever or to try to veer off into some different direction, but very much to keep that uh, traditional image that we're all very much used to. The King Charles III stamp is part of a new exhibition at the Postal Museum. From Queen Victoria's Penny Black in 1840, through to more recent and more familiar images. The definitive stamp of Queen Elizabeth II was unchanged for the last 55 years of her reign. It is believed to be the most reproduced work of art in history. A new stamp can take two to three years to be planned, designed, printed and put on sale. The new King Charles III stamp has been prepared in a fraction of that time so that it will be in circulation in time for the coronation. And the production of those stamps is now well underway. Each one showing an image that will become synonymous with this reign. The stamp of King Charles III goes on sale on the 4th of April. Daniela Ralph, BBC News, The Postal Museum. Well, our Royal Correspondent Sarah Campbell is at the museum in central London for us this morning to see not just that stamp, but the history of royal stamps right in front of you. Yeah, good morning to you. Uh, ready for a bit of royal philately? This is Queen Victoria. She was the first royal to feature on a stamp. This is not the penny black. This is the two penny blue, but equally priceless. In fact, potentially even more so because it's incredibly rare. Let's move on to the next one. And Chris Taft, who is the head of collections here. This, even more rare, completely priceless. Completely. This is uh, Edward VII's uh, stamps that was produced, um, but he died before it was issued. So all of the stamps were destroyed and only two copies survive anywhere in the world, both of them in the Postal Museum's collection. So if you've got one of these at home, then uh, hold on to it. <laughs> now let's take us down here and let's have a look at all of the, the stamps. Really interesting fact, Britain is the only country that doesn't have to have its um, place name on the stamp. The, the, the image of the monarch is enough. The image of the monarch is enough. It's a privilege afforded to the country as the country invented the postage stamp. Lovely. We've got King Edward VIII uh, there, of course. We've got George VI, the Queen's father. Just take a little look at this. Very ornate, crowns, etc., which is quite relevant when we look at King Charles III's image. Yeah, so all of the monarchs have influenced the design of their stamps, and George VI elected to have a more decorative style, although less decorative than his father did. And just moving along, Queen Elizabeth II, of course. This image taken in um, has been, didn't change from 1967. Even though she got older, the coins changed, notes changed, this image didn't. Yes, yeah, so Elizabeth has only had two images on stamps throughout her entire reign. And this one introduced in 1967 was, um, it has become the iconic image that everybody's familiar with from postage stamps. It's fascinating stuff, Chris. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave you here. Let's have the big reveal. I know you've seen it already in Daniela's package, but um, here we are. David Gold from Royal Mail. Tell me about this image, how it came about. Um, it's quite sort of plain when you look at some of the other ones. Well, it's an image created by Martin Jennings for the Royal Mint, and many of your viewers will have seen them on, on coins now. Uh, we've adapted the image using uh, a little bit of extra lighting, some digital wizardry to make it suitable to go on a stamp. The guidance we were given was that the King wanted very much to continue the tradition of the stamps that people have grown used to. And I think what you see here 
is, you know, in many ways a, 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 a representation of what you saw in 1840, the image on a plain background facing into the envelope. But what is different is there's no sort of monarchy references, there's no crown, no heraldry. It, it's the man, it's Charles, it's, it's effectively him saying, this is me and I am at your service. I think it's very fitting for the modern age. And approved by him, so this is the image that he decided he wanted. Absolutely, all stamps are approved personally by the monarch. It's something we understand that the late Queen took some pleasure in doing and thankfully never rejected a stamp. So we hope we can keep that tradition going uh, under the new reign as well. So fascinating stuff, thank you so much. We should Im finish on this image, which once again, um, you can start sticking on envelopes from uh, April the 4th, so just in time for the coronation. There we are, the image of King Charles III on a postage stamp. Coming soon to a parcel near you. <laughs> yes. Sarah, thank you very much indeed. Get used to that site. We're going to see millions and millions more of them over the months ahead. Real moment in history, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and when you look back at history and you look back at stamps, you know, they tell the story not just of the monarch, but of an era, don't they? Don't the you time. wish you'd kept them from when you were little? Yeah, we were just talking about stamp collecting back in the 70s. <laughs> Everyone was at it. Maybe we should need to start again. Right, it's 7.30. Let's get the news, the travel and weather from our first-class teams around the UK. See you in a second. Hello there, good morning. A former firearms officer who won a payout of almost £1 million from Police Scotland claims an external review following her tribunal lacks independence, depth and smacks of a cover-up.